everyone is uh, ready to settle on down here. All righty, go ahead, Tim. All righty, two questions to start off with. Who here backs up their phone and or computer? Okay, all right, Ethan. Who, of those that raise their hand, who would follow me into the kitchen with your phone and your computer and uh, wet your phone or computer down and feel confident you wouldn't lose any data? No hands? One hand, awesome, all right. All right, so that's a little bit of what I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm here to talk to you about today. Personal digital con uh, continuity, how to survive a single point of failure. Well, you know, you may have, I'm sorry, how to survive without a single point of failure. A point of senior failure, see I'm confusing myself here, um, basically you don't want your digital life to be dependent upon one single thing failure. You've got to have a backup. Now they say that a picture is a thousand words and, and I'm supposed to give you maybe not quite a thousand words today, but just in your mind think about you went to DEF CON, you got done with DEF CON, you got done with the, the boot camp, your, your boss sent you off to in Vegas. <laughs> so you're going to go hiking out on Mount Charleston in Nevada. Beautiful countryside, take a few hours to get up here. You have an amazing time with your backpack on. But you trip over a rock and you break your ankle. And then your cell phone died. What are you going to do? How do you get the helicopter up there to get you down? Well, in hiking, backpacking, outdoors, we have something called the 10 essentials or the 12 essentials. And I won't go into a lot of detail on that, although catch me afterwards if you want to talk. But that is kind of the framework, that is kind of the uh, philosophy that I'm going to hopefully uh, encourage you to, to think about in your digital life. Now, people, people think about, well, you know, I'm going to go ahead and prepare for this. How prepared am I going to be? Um, I personally have worked with a few organizations where they literally prepared for CBRN events, chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear events, what happens if the financial network, networks go down, etc. This stock is not going to prepare you for that. I don't want that responsibility. But I also bring this, thought, this up to tell you it is fun to table, to, to, to uh, table and think tank and uh, and pretend, oh, well, you know, if, if this breaks, I'm going to go and fix this. And if that breaks, I'm going to go and fix this. And then this, no. Because you'll spend all day long thinking about what, how many different things could break that you have to fix to recover and recoup and repair. But maybe you don't get anything done. I have a note here. Apparently, the second uh, second sign sometimes causes people problem problems. They ask me, "What does it say?" So just to let you know. Sie haben fünfzig Minuten Zeit, um den Mindestsicherheitsabstand einzuhalten. Hopefully that helps you. <laughs> so, are you still breathing? I'm still breathing. Which, by the way, I'm sorry. I'm having a, a lot of. Um, ragweed sinus stuff, so please holler if I need to speak up or anything. But this is going to be our baseline uh, prerequisite. If you're not breathing, I'm not your problem. You're not my problem. You're somebody else's problem. Again, you don't have to plan for this. You don't have to plan for the eventuality that um, somebody else has to pick up your job or your digital life. At the end of your life, you can put it all in, in, uh, in a box and somebody else can think about it. All you have to think about is what are you going to do to ensure your continuity, your security, your comfort. Uh, the other thing that I, I, the reason I bring up, are you breathing, is I don't want to deal with medical devices. Um, in today's environment, if you have a CGM or a uh, a glucose pump or something else, a lot of times they will tie into the rest of your digital life, uh, digital accounts and whatnot. Um, I'm also going to, to beg off from that and say, talk to your medical provider, talk to your device provider, let them deal with that. But today we're going to talk about assets, risks, remediation, and documentation to go ahead and help you build a personal digital continuity plan. 
So first of all, we're going to identify some services, some cap 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 uh, capabilities. And as we go through these, I want you to kind of remember what, is, what are the things that are important to you? What do you want to have to maintain your normal? Uh, so first of all, we, we talk about communication, social networking, and all that good stuff. Next, most important is probably banking for a lot of people. Where's the money? Uh, and then we also want to talk about utilities. File management and other, other authentication are a little bit more nerdy, but in my opinion, they're actually maybe even a higher priority than some of these other items. Um, some of us that like to do home auto automation, other uh, internet of things, that might be important. And then work from home, WFH. Can you ensure, if your primary network goes down, can you ensure that you can report to your manager and say, hey, please still employ me? And then entertainment. Uh, this is something that a lot of younger folks, um, I, I don't think they really rock all that much. And um, entertainment is not all streaming. Maybe the entertainment is uh, a band that you like that no longer is around, or uh, a video of someone that uh, you, you know, it's original, unique. You can't go back onto uh, iTunes and re-download it if you were to suffer a hard drive failure. Next, we're going to talk about risk. What are some, you know, individual risks? What are some uh, general community risks? Again, we're not going to worry about the, the, the nukes because if somebody were to drop a nuke onto Kansas City, um, again, you're not breathing any longer, so it's not my problem. Uh, tornadoes, power outage, network outage. Um, transportation outage is an interesting thing because, again, if you're supposed to show up to work and you have a transportation outage, and then that was because you're your Tesla caught fire and your phone was in there, how are you going to reach out to your employer and say, hey, I've had a personal emergency. I need to get uh, you know, a new car and a new phone. Um, and then what we also, I talked about briefly about uh, damage to laptop or your mobile, co mobile computing device. Hardly anybody here was comfortable with going and dumping their phone or the computer into the, the kitchen sink. So I would identify that as a risk because rain happens, children happen, they, they like to dump things on there. Maybe that beer that you got sitting next to your laptop you knock over, it fries out your keyboard. All things you can think of. And then, as we've identified our capabilities, what we need to, to maintain normalcy, our risks, we want to prioritize that because you know, if it's um, something that you only access every six months, is it really all that important? Do you want to spend the time and money to, to protect it? Uh, we identify uh, risk uh, priorities in cybersecurity quite a bit, um, but have you ever sat down and, and figured out your priorities on your own personal risks? Um, I like to look at, of course, money first. Um, my immediate concern for my comfort and then also, what's my long-term harm to my comfort and or reputation? Like if I lose access to a social network, I may lose personal business contacts that I, mean, I then try and reach out to them through another method. They may simply ignore me because they don't know that new number or that new screen name or something else. So I've lost reputation at that point. Uh, and then also we need to look at how hard is it to repair. Maybe it's really easy to protect, but it's super expensive to repair. And so we need to bump the priority up on that. And the thing that is probably absolutely most important to me is how hard it is to replace. Again, I can go to iTunes and re-download um, the, the song du jour, but if it's a, uh, a picture of my grandma, I'm not ever going to get that back. I don't have the opportunity of taking more pictures of grandma. So that probably is going to be for me, maybe for you as well, the very most important thing. So after that, after all that, we, we prioritize, we want to determine our recovery plan. And this is uh, left very intentionally non-technical because what works for you is not going to work for other people. And then you also have to determine how much money and time you're going to spend on this. Maybe you want to spin up a Amazon uh, a work desk, VDI, to have a backup computer. That's 
pretty expensive if you run it for a while. Maybe it's cheaper just to go to Walmart and pick a $300 laptop if your uh, original laptop burns. Um, so you also are going to want to think about how quickly um, you need to restore recover. Um, maybe it's something that can take six months. Maybe it's something that if you're in an initial capability of taking and receiving phone calls down, uh, goes down, maybe you need to go to Sprint or T-Mobile that very next day and pick up a new phone. Um, writing it down. So not only are we going to write down our backup plan, but we're going to also back up our backup plan, which seems kind of recursive, but I can't tell you, even the people that have a backup plan, it's like, eh, I'll think about it one of these days. They cannot pull out the sheet and document it to me, or they can, but it then got burned down to the house. So how the heck are you going to back thing or restore things if you don't have if you don't have your your original backup plan to, to go to? Um, I will again reemphasize: perfect is the enemy of good. Uh, if you spend 20 hours thinking about one situation and how you're going to recover from uh, nuclear kitty cats from Mars, maybe you'll never employ a Dropbox account to, to back up the very basic items that you need. And then also you've got to practice it because a, a backup plan unpracticed is not a true backup plan. A backup that you cannot restore or never try to restore is an invalid backup. So, a couple quick examples. Um, again, the most basic item that, that everybody can do walking out today is if your, your phone or your uh, uh, telecommunication service does not already offer an automated uh, backup, camera roll backup, go ahead and enable that. Dropbox. I haven't used Dropbox, honestly, for a long time, um, but it used to be that you could get 50 megs from them or 50 gigs from them for free, I think. Um, if not, I'm sure it's almost probably worth tossing 50 bucks out of my year to do some basic backup. And to re-emphasize, to really just hopefully inspire people, I like to ask people when I'm talking about this, who must you talk about in past tense? Because again, you can go get the song of the day off of iTunes, but if you have a favorite pet, that you have photos of, that pet has passed, you're not going to have photos that you can remake. For me, my, my grandmother, my mother, I unfortunately don't have the opportunity of ever getting photos again. So I am going to protect these photos almost to you know, my life. And to do that, I back up better. Um, not only do I have a Dropbox, which honestly I haven't access to in a while, I have a complete backup of my LAN. Uh, everything uh, as far as uh, uh, desktop computer, laptop computer, um, uh, different accessories on the, on the LAN, I'll go into a uh, Synology NAS. Um, I like Synology. I won't tell you that you can't use anything else, but I do like Synology. I like the services that it offers. And that Synology then goes and gets pushed up to Black Bay. Uh, back blades. Um, I will be improving this this year. Um, I have a, a buddy that lives on the opposite side of town. I'm going to buy a, a secondary Synology. Not only will it then uh, my original Synology at my apartment push to the cloud, it will push across town to my buddy. And that way, say a tornado hits my apartment, I can drive over to my buddies and pick up my backup that same day. I don't even have to worry about back blades. The other thing that a lot of people don't think about in today's world is authentication issues. How quickly you can walk yourself out of your own accounts. Say you have a regular Samsung phone, maybe it caught on fire, maybe it's, I think that might be the normal operation uh, mode of those phones. I hate Samsung. Um, you know, it's burnt, your laptop is wet and burnt and crushed. Where's your two factor? Where's your passwords if you use a password safe? So the way that I personally back up my authentication is I register multiple, multiple YubiKeys. Again, don't mean to be uh, vendor specific, but YubiKey is the bomb. Uh, I register multiple, multiple YubiKeys 
for my uh, accounts that require uh, two-factor authentication. Uh, if for some reason they don't like YubiKey or it's a little bit more um, precise, I use a NitroKey Pro, which is offered by a German uh, corporation, a, uh, a public, um, uh, like an organization, um, I'm, I'm forgetting exactly how they're classified, but they're like a charitable technical organization. That allows me to not only store um, keys on there, crypto keys on there, but also has cryptographic um, media storage in it as well. So I can uh, push my uh, two-factor seeds and then also um, password manager, anything else that I want the local encryption on, encryption on. I can keep that in my bug out bag. I can store a second coffee with my sister, etc. And uh, those are my, uh, my topics, uh, my talk. Do we have any questions? Should we have a conversation? Did it make any sense? <laughs> awesome. Well, I want to say thank you to the, uh, you guys for your kind patience. And then also, please, let me encourage you to thank, uh, have you thanked the vendors and any folks that you're seeing the vests are, because without them, we would not have a local security conference to come to. Thank you.